It turns out that two of the investors who I like to keep in my mind have conflicting views on U.S. banks. One is optimistic of their future and says to buy them. The other is pessimistic and has sold a significant amount of his positions in them. Today I'll discuss the likely reasons behind their differing opinions on these banks and take a look at both sides of the argument for the future of U.S. financial companies, so stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. My name's Logan. I really like to talk about overall success in investing, as well as going against crowd thinking mentality. Uh, so if you like these kinds of topics, just consider subscribing. So to begin with, let's look at the background that these two investors bring to the table. To begin with, let's look at Steve Eisman, and he's a much less uh, well-known investor than Warren Buffett. Steve Eisman is the current portfolio manager for Newberger Berman, which is a privately owned investment firm. Now they have a collective $339 billion under management, so this is not some small hedge fund like some other investors I look at. This is a serious uh, level of investor. Um, Steve Eisman definitely brings us to the table as well. Like Michael Burry, he was one of only a handful of investors to see the U.S. housing crisis and banking leverage, and he profited from it immensely from this in buying credit default swaps on these assets. Unlike Michael Burry, Eisman saw this coming because of different reasons. He looks heavily at banks and the leverage that they take on. In being overly leveraged like they were in 2007 and 2008, they were at a huge potential downside risk, and this is what attracted Eisman to shorting subprime mortgage CDOs. So needless to say, Steve Eisman brings a lot of knowledge to the table when it comes to banks and financial companies around the world. Warren Buffett, as I'm sure you are all aware, is one of the most famous investors of all time. He's the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and has produced average annual returns of roughly 20% for his investors since the inception of Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, he's sometimes accused right now of being outdated in his investing approach as he hasn't been very keen on technology stocks, but overall he has a great track record with value investing, buying undervalued companies with great underlying fundamentals and you know, basically holding them as long as he thinks they are undervalued or, you know, when they've reached a valuation that he thinks is overvalued, he'll sometimes sell them, but he usually tends to hold them pretty, pretty long. So now let's get into the differences Buffett and Eisman have and how this could lead to two very different takes on the state of the U.S. banks. Steve Eisman was advocating going long U.S. banks back in April of this year, saying that they are in a much stronger position compared to other banks around the world. And at the release of Berkshire Hathaway's Q2 filing, it was revealed that Buffett sold a significant amount of his shares in Wells Fargo and JP Morgan, and he entirely cut out Goldman Sachs. Uh, it's also important to note that Buffett bought more shares of Bank of America, and now Berkshire Hathaway owns nearly 12% of this company. So in this way, he could be somewhat in line with uh, Steve Eisman but he still sold out of all his other bank uh, investments to some extent, and some of them at a significant loss, selling them much lower than where he bought them just a few years ago. So what could Buffett be afraid of that Eisman doesn't care about or either or see? Well, the answer likely lies in interest rates. You see, the profitability of most banks depends heavily on interest rates that are set by the Federal Reserve. If rates are at 0% or even less than 1%, there is simply very little money to be made if you're a bank. Sure, some banks that focus heavily on, say, credit card loans or who can charge fees for consumer accounts could maybe keep up with this loss in other ways. But by and large, banks can't turn anywhere near the level of profitability in low interest rates environments than they can with high interest rates. Buffett likely bought into banks like Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan heavily back in 2009 because he could have seen rates beginning to rise and normalize after the 2008 financial crisis. However, this did not happen. Rates rose briefly between 2016 and 2019, but they have been on the decline ever since. And since the coronavirus, the Fed abruptly cut them off a cliff to nearly 0%, uh, basically 0%, 0.5%, but basically 0%. So it makes sense why Buffett would sell Goldman Sachs completely. They're an investment bank who are the most reliant compared with pretty much any other bank on interest rates. And with the rates back at nearly 0%, Buffett likely didn't see much of a future for them right now. 
Now with JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, I am more confused as to why he would have sold them as well. Obviously he didn't sell out of them as aggressively as Goldman Sachs, but he still cut his positions significantly. So it was probably along the same line as interest rates. Yeah, even though these banks aren't as dependent on them, their margins are still hurt. And the Fed promising, quote unquote, to keep rates near zero through 2023 um, could have scared him as well. This is a pretty insane thing for the Fed to say. They've never before given guidance this far out with regards to interest rates. And this could have scared Buffett with regards to the future of these banking companies. So now let's take a look at Steve Eisman and his bullish case for U.S. banks. Now, even though he certainly knows the same things as Buffett, he has a different take on other variables. His bullish take essentially has to do entirely with the state of leverage of U.S. banks and other banks around the world. Essentially, Eisman makes the point that the 2008 financial crisis forced regulators to crack down on U.S. banks like never before. And this puts U.S. banks in a much more stable position than other global banks who did not have to go through the 2008 cleanup. With regulators monitoring the state of leverage and risk taking in US banks much more than in banks in Europe and Asia, this has the potential for US banks to weather a storm much more intact than banks in any of these other markets who were not affected in 2008. According to Eisman, these banks are still at extremely risky multiples of leverage. And this makes the likelihood of them having serious issues in a recession much more likely. Now, even though these two notable investors have different takes on U.S. banks, it seems that both of them are coming from good reasoning as to their positions. I personally don't know who is more correct in their thinking, but it seems that Buffett as a whole is just trying to be much more cautious in this current environment. And that is definitely not a bad position to be in. It's definitely better to be safe than sorry, especially in an uncertain time as this. And anyway, I would like to hear what you guys think. Are banks still a bad investment? Are some of them okay? Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think, and I hope to see you again.